Hey Pixels, welcome back to part two of building a one-page fruit-themed website in Webflow. If you haven't watched part one, pause this video and watch part one where I'll show you how I built the navbar and hero section for the website. In this video, we'll build out the rest of the website and play around with interactions to really bring this website to life. For this series, I really wanted to keep it real and walk you through my entire design process that's not so perfect, but that's okay because remember, practice makes ExoPixel perfect. So let's get started. Okay, so I am going to hit the plus icon and grab a section component, place it onto the page and then I'll give it the class name XOP section and then I'm going to grab a container and this time I'm going to give the class name XOP container H and H stands for horizontal. Now I'm going to remove the height for this section because um, the hero section was the only section that needed a height. Now we're just going to rely on the actual content um, that we place within the container to in the section to, you know, expand the height as needed. So in other words, it's going to be auto. Um, and then we have our padding, of course. So I want the max width, though, of our container to be 1360 pixels and right now it didn't do anything and I'm just gonna see so I do have some I see this is a flex item so there's like a flex thing going on with this section because um, I did apply I mean I'm using XOP section so it's kind of applying the styles that I did in the hero section to this so I'm gonna have to I'm just gonna have to reconfigure it a little and tweak it so it doesn't do that moving forward. Um, so I'm going to remove the flex and there we go. So now it's, you know, acting accordingly how I want it. Um, let's see if there's anything else that's kind of interfering. So nope, we have a padding, no height, and then the max width. Okay, so this is looking good. I did remove the height, so I, let me just reapply it. Now that we have the hero, another class applied, it's strictly going to only apply it to XOP section hero. So let's just add back 800. See how easy. Section, it has an eyebrow, a heading on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side, it has like a blurb or a paragraph text that defines what a fruit is. So I'm just gonna have to build out that structure. Place that inside of the container. And I'm gonna give it a max width of 500 pixels. I'm gonna rename it to uh, XLP heading. Cause it's like the heading content. And then I'm gonna add our heading. So we have the heading. And it's an H2, and then it says, what exactly is a fruit? Oh, where is it? There it is. And it's four rems, which translates to 64 pixels. Okay, let's save that 1.3. And then I'm gonna add the eyebrow, so. Let's grab a text block, finish, XOP eyebrow. So I can say XOP eyebrow, distill the style, but then left. And then that, okay, good, yes. <laughs> okay, so I just had to add another class and then, you know, a slight tweak. And then now that's applied to Anything that's X will be eyebrow left. So now I'm gonna grab paragraph, copy and paste the definition of a fruit. So the paragraph is 1.5 RAM. 
and 1.7 is the line height. Okay, we rename this to XOPP, which stands for paragraph. I am going to give it a max width of 500 pixels. So I have all the text styling I want, but I also want to um, arrange it so that the headings, this heading, all of this is on the left hand side and then the paragraph is on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the container and I'm going to set it to display flex. I am going to select justify space between and then I'm going to select the container. So I'm grabbing that whole thing. We're going to select first, select paragraph and align this child to last. And then, oh, I'm just, I don't want this. So I'm gonna remove that margin there. And let me just select the container again. And right now it's stretching it, but I don't want that. So I'm gonna actually select center, so it's aligned to the center. And let me just preview this. And there we go. That looks so good. That looks so good. So let me get out of preview. So we just need to do one more thing and I have a bunch of fruit images that I'm going to add below. Look for image, drag it right below the container, but still in the section. And I'll choose the image. So it's this one right here. Look at all that fruits making me hungry. Um, let me actually add a margin of 60 pixels. So that way there's, you know, some kind of spacing. And let me just preview that to see what I did. Mm hmm there we go. Yeah, I love this. We did our definition section. Now let's move on to the anatomy section. All right, so we just built our definition section and now we're going to build the anatomy section. Now, because we already did the layout and we built the layout for the definition section, the anatomy section is using basically the exact same layout. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select that entire section and I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna hit duplicate. And because I duplicated it, it's going to appear below and I'm just going to update the text. All I need to do now is I'm just going to update this image here to a really nice image that highlights all the different parts of a fruit. So here it is and I selected it. Bam! Bob's your uncle. Um, okay, so that's the section. That's all we needed to do for that section. So now that we've done the anatomy section, uh, um, we're gonna build the nutrition section. So the nutrition section, just like the sections before it, has the exact same layout. We are going to duplicate the section and just update the text, change the image, and then we're done. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure I have the section selected. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit duplicate. It's gonna appear below. And you know, I just update the text. And then right below it, I am going to grab this image we just have two more sections left so we have the facts section so we're gonna you know build the section that gives us fun little facts about each fruit and then we have the call to action so let's start building the facts section all right so now we are going to build the facts section we're gonna have some interactive cards that you can hover over and card flips over it's going to show a fact it's going to flip back over and just show the image of the fruit it's just going to be really cool so let's build that out i'm going to right click and i'm just going to click duplicate 
I'm gonna delete the image of the fruit and I'm actually going to remove the class and give it the class name XOP container V and the V stands for vertical because we're gonna have more of a vertical layout in contrast to the previous horizontal layout. Delete the eyebrow. I want this to be a flex layout, but instead of horizontal, I want it to be vertical and I want to align it to the center. And I also want the text to be aligned to the center. So I'm just gonna update the heading to say facts and then I want the paragraph to say hover over each fruit to reveal a fact. Or let me add a fruit fact. <laughs> well, now that we have our heading section built out, I want to, we're gonna create a grid. I'm going to hit this plus icon, a grid. And I'm just gonna drag it below. We want four columns. So right now by default it's two. So I'm just gonna go into this menu here, hit the plus icon and add two more columns. And it already has two rows, so that's fine because um, that's the exact amount we need. I'm just gonna hit done because we set up the grid. Now we just need to add the cards inside each grid. So again, I'm gonna hit the plus icon. I'm gonna grab a div, place it into one of the columns. I'm gonna give it a class name. XOP fact card, color it blue, I'm gonna paste it here. And there we go. And let's make the border radius 100%, 100%. So let's give our div a width of 280 and a height of 280 pixels. So let's set that to 280 pixels and then height to 280 pixels. So now that we have our circle created, I'm gonna add another div that will contain all the copies. So the title of the fruit as well as the little facts about that fruit. I'm gonna hit the plus icon, let's grab a div. And I'm gonna place it inside of this div. So I'm gonna have to, let me just collapse this. And I'm gonna go into grid. And let me place that within it like so. And then I'm going to add a heading. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to add paragraph and again you know you have to go into navigator to make sure everything is placed correctly uh, come on does it want to work with me oh there we go all right so we have everything we need i'm just going to shorten this for now and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build out, you know, the interactivity of the card, how it looks, everything. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is add that, the exact copy that I'm gonna use for each card. I am going to change the heading of this card. Let me say XOP card title. And I'm gonna remove this margin here. We're gonna change the font family to this. I'm gonna resize it to one point. Then align to center. One point two. And then we're gonna shrink this down to zero. 0.875 rem and then align it to the center. Don't like how this is sitting at the top. Navigator, so with this selected first, let me select that div block, rename it XOP, copy. So I just applied flex 
layout or the flex box to this div, the XLP fat card div. Just going to resize the width of the card copy. Give it a max width of 200 pixels. So when we hover over this card, I want this text to show, but then when it's not hovered, I want an image of a fruit to show. What I'm gonna do is I am going to have to add a div, put the in image of the fruit I want inside of this div, and then I'm gonna animate it. Gonna have to kind of do it on top of the card, but don't worry, you'll see what I'm doing and it all makes sense. So there's my div. Again, we gotta go into Navigator, make sure this div is where we want it. Come on, div. So let me just make sure this is in the fat card. There it is. I'm gonna give it the class name XLP card image. And you know what? Let me just rename this XLP card copy image. And then I'm going to place an image like so. I'm gonna choose my image. Let's start with a banana. And let me just, I don't think it's in the div. So again, I have to go into Navigator. There we go. There we go. Now, right now, this is sitting right beside the div, but again, we want it to be right on top of this card. So I'm just going to hit XLP fat card again. So this is like our, our main parent div and then XOP copy is one div and then XOP image or card image is the other div. So I want this to be relative. So I'm going to scroll down. Let me just make sure the position is relative. And then I want this XOP card image div. So let me just make sure that's selected. And then I'm going to set this to position absolute and that's gonna get this right on top of the card just as we wanted it right, so now that we've built the fact card we're gonna add a cool interaction to the card so with xlp fact card selected i'm gonna open up the interactions um, tab i'm gonna hit the plus icon this is a hover a mouse hover animation so I'm just gonna select mouse hover and on hover I am gonna start an animation and it's gonna be a timed animation just gonna hit this plus icon and I'm gonna title this animation show text and now we're gonna add some actions so I'm going to select XOP card copies. I'm gonna hit the plus icon and I'm going to select hide show. And I am going to set this to hiding this element. And I'm gonna set this as initial state. And now I'm gonna select the image div. I wanna make sure I'm selecting the image div, so I'm gonna go into Navigator. There it is. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna hit the plus icon, hide show, set as initial state, and I want to display it. So I hit display block, so it's gonna initially just show the image and then hide the copy. But then I also want to duplicate it, so I'm just gonna select copy an image, right click, hit duplicate. And then when it's hovered over, so this is on page load. But then when we hover over, I want the copy to show. So I'm gonna change this to display. And then I want the image hidden. So again, on page load, we just want the banana to show. We're gonna hide the copy, just show the banana. And then when we hover over the card, I want to show the copy and then hide the banana or the image. So I'm gonna hit save. So this is on hover. Now we need to do on hover out. So on hover, we did that already. So now we need to animate it when the mouse is off. So on hover out, I'm going to hit the action drop down, start an animation. 
and then I'm gonna hit the plus icon. And we're gonna name this hide text. So when we hover it out, the text is hidden, and then we're gonna show the banana. So I'm going to select XOP card copy, hit the plus icon, hide show, and I am going to scroll down and hit hide. And then I'm going to select the image. Let me make sure I'm selecting the div. And then I'm going to hit the plus icon, hide show. And we're gonna hit display block. So it's gonna show the image. So I am actually going to change where it says timing. I want it to start with the previous action. This is very important. So I'm gonna select that, gonna hit save. And now let's preview what we just did. So I'm gonna scroll down. We have our banana, we have our heading, and then a banana is showing when we have it off. So hover on, hover off, hover on, hover off. So cool. So now that we've built the card, all that we need to do is duplicate each card, update the text according to each fruit. So I'm going to select the card. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit duplicate. And then I'm going to replace this image with a watermelon. And then I'm going to update the heading to say watermelon. And then I'm gonna paste a fact about a watermelon. And I'm just gonna repeat this for each card. So now I'm going to repeat this process for each card. So now that we've finished the cards, there's a few tweaks that I want to do to this section. So the first thing is I want to add a margin of 80 pixels below the XOP container. So I'm just going to select that and where it says margin, I'm just going to type 80 pixels. And then I also want to add padding because the edges are being cut off for the section. So I'm selecting this entire section and I'm going to add 20 pixels of padding on either side. And keep in mind that because we're using this class XLP section, it's gonna to apply to all instances of this class, you know, throughout the website. So the cards look so good, but I do want to add one more tweak to this site as I'm looking at it now. I actually want to add a margin of 20 pixels below each card. So I'm just going to select the fat card and then add 20 pixels below each card. So as I preview it now, there's some more space top and bottom for each card. So that's the facts section. We just have one more section to build and that is the call to action section. So to design the call to action section, I am going to select the facts section because it's using that similar vertical layout. So I'm just going to select this, right click, hit duplicate, and it's going to populate below. I'm going to delete the grid and I'm just going to update the text that's in the container here. So I'm going to right by fruit and then I'll say get your pack of 120 high res fruit cutouts on exopixel.com and I'm going to select the section and as you recall in the design, when we designed it in Adobe XD, there's that really cool image of all the fruits right at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to add a background to this section. So because we're using XLP section, remember this is being applied to all of these sections before it. So when I apply the background, 
it's going to apply to all sections and I don't want that. So I'm going to add an additional class and I'm going to call it CTA. So that way this section is separated and will be treated differently, a little differently than the sections before it. So we have the section selected. I'm gonna add a background. And I'm gonna choose the image. And I'm gonna grab that image right here. I'm going to select at two. I'm going to position it right at the bottom and I do not want this to tile. And I'm gonna change the size to contain. And there we go, that is the background applied. Since this is a call to action, I also want to add a really nice CTA button. So I am going to add a button right below this paragraph. So I want this to say download and I'm going to give it the class name button. So it's inheriting the same styles as the button in the top navigation. So this button, it's so close to the paragraph. We do wanna have some spacing in between each element. So I'm gonna select the button and I'm gonna give it the class name XOP, or no, I'll say XOP BTN CTA, all these abbreviations. I'm gonna add a margin of 20 pixels at the top of this button. And that way we have some space in between each element. All right, so we designed the call to action or CTA section for our website. That's our final section. So let's add a really nice background to this entire website. So I'm going to make sure I have the body selected and I'm gonna add a really nice background. So I'm gonna choose this background. I'm gonna set this to cover, I'm gonna position it in the middle and I do not want this to tile and I want it to be fixed position. We have that really nice background that enhances the look of the site. Okay, so now I want to turn this nav bar into a fixed nav or a sticky nav. So essentially as this page scrolls, I want the nav to follow. Now there's a few updates we need to do to this nav bar in order to make this happen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that I'm selecting the entire XOP nav bar and not the container, the XOP nav bar. So now that I have this selected, I want to make sure that it's blue. And I also want to add 20 pixels of padding on either side. And then top and bottom, I also want to add 20 pixels of padding. Now because we added our styles to the entire navbar section, I want to remove some styles we added to the container within the nav bar. So I'm just gonna remove that. And it's so easy just to remove, you know, styles that you applied. So just removing all of that. So now we have the section with the padding and all that stuff. So now that we've fixed and tweaked the nav bar, I'm going to select XOP nav bar. And where it says position, I'm going to set it to sticky. I'm gonna to set top to zero. And now if we scroll, it follows us as we scroll. And I also, I wanna make sure I have opacity set to the background. So again, I'm gonna hit the background. And under A, let's set that to 80%. Well, yeah, so there's some of the background that we originally applied. So, you know, it's so easy, just remove it. And let's preview this. There we go. That looks so good. Another thing we need to do is I want to link each link to each section. So that way as we scroll, it will update in the menu that we're on the section. And then if we click it, we'll scroll right to that section. So let me get out of preview. So I'm gonna select this section. This is the hero section. 
and I am going to select this gear icon and right where it says ID, I'm going to type in hero. And then I'm gonna select the definition section and we're gonna call this definition. And then we're gonna select the anatomy section, anatomy, and then nutrition section. Give it the ID. We're gonna select the entire facts section. We're gonna give it the ID facts. And then the call to action section, the ID will be CTA. And now we can just apply the exact same IDs to the URLs. So we're gonna leave the hashtag and we're gonna type in hero because remember that's the first section and then definition and then we're gonna select the anatomy link and where it says link settings and that to me and then nutrition again we're going to keep the hashtag and write the name accordingly and then buy is CTA I'm also going to link the download button to the CTA section. So I'm just going to hit preview and let's test that out. So it's going to the hero section, the definition section, anatomy, nutrition. That's how I built my one page fruit themed website in Webflow. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new and if you followed along, be sure to tag me on social media. I love to see what you create. I'll see you in the next video.